prioritizing the Koshka here. This could be... Well, they have prioritized the Koshka. It, this is very uh, different. First pick, Koshka has a lot of pretty significant potential counters. It'll be interesting to see what they, like, kind of round it out with, but Lance kind of... First up is a roam. I would already kind of <laughs> figure out like, hey, there's Kashka. Let's get the Githian walls down. Let's try to land some impales to keep her from being able to get into the fight. Yeah, it's going to be very difficult for Kashka to get into these fights, especially against the Blackfoot and Lance. Lance with the Githian wall will constantly be pressuring him and pushing him away. And especially with the impales, it'll be very difficult for, I imagine, Von C to be um, that Kashka to be getting into these fights. So Kashka, Gwen, Adagio there for TSM. And it's going to be Lance, which we know Hack like to prioritize. That and um, Ozo, I think they said that they had their priorities. Lance is going to be locked in here. Blackfeather at two. And maybe they're going to finish this up with a Samuel. So that's going to be Lance, Blackfeather, and Samuel here. Quickly, gentlemen, what are these compositions designed to do? So TSM has obviously been practicing a lot in NA with Velocity. You see the Adagio Roam come through again. We saw the strength of Kashka Adagio combination being able to really apply the jungle pressure. And then, of course, that early game pressure leads to a late game Gwen. So I actually think the composition has been well thought out. We saw the Samuel kind of not sure when it came in. It seemed like a little bit of a last second kind of we think this will do good into this. I don't think Hack was prepared for the comp, so maybe TSM has the edge. Very quickly, predictions? I have to go with TSM. I'm going to go with Hack this one. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to go for TSM. And believe it or not, we have everyone's favorite Vainglory duo. It is AJ and Humanist. Take it away, lads. Thank you very much, Excoundrel. We are so excited to be here at the World Championship casting some games. Oh, Man, yeah. what a draft to kick things off, at least for us, right? I mean, Kashka as a first pick. That is crazy. We're going to have some fun. That, that, oh, yeah. that is all I know. TSM versus Hack. This is hype. All right, let's get on to the fold, ladies and gentlemen, for Team Solimid versus Hack. Humanist, let's talk straight away here about some of these team composition choices from the teams. We did see that Koshka to begin with. It's paired with the Gwen and the Adagio. This feels very much like a North American composition. It's very aggressive in the jungle. Yeah, and we've seen the, the Koshka Adagio go to work earlier. We're going to see the abused moose be coming out of the Koshka. Von C will do it almost better than anyone. Flash just needs to sit in the back line, get that burn from the Gift of Fire, keep his ally alive, and uh, it should be enough. I I'm really interested to see how best Chuck uh, plays with this win here. Though. Oh, Sense play trying to go for the Impale, but he misses it. We talk about this all the time. He can't miss those as a Lance in the early game. Von C wants the kill. He picks it up. He is getting taken quite low, trying to back away now. Oh, Malice and Verdict not going to finish him off. Flash trying to sustain him a bit. They're actually thinking about going back in here, humanist. Von C, look at the he damage! Did. He finds a second kill. Team Solo mid out of the gate strong. All right, well, we, you see this engagement. You have to know that you are level one. Team Solo mid has a level two. That is an advantage that you cannot go against there. If Dada had his level two, that was a kill, but it did not happen. Oh, man, this is really interesting to me. See Sense play trying? I think he did actually yeah, he get that. Yeah, got that. That was a nice steal. Yeah, that was a very nice steal coming out of him. That said, TSM is still doing the right thing here. You know, they get some kills. They don't just sit back on that. They go and try and get some invades down. I want to talk to you a little bit about play styles. Obviously, Hack is from the East Asia re region. Team Solomid from North America. One thing we've been hearing is that East Asia, something they love to do is group is three and team fight. They're almost better at it than any other region. You saw them do that with a very quick rotation from uh, the lane, right? But actually, Team Solomid adapted. They did the exact same thing, and they're looking for some more damage here. Von C, he's got to be careful not to go oh. too deep, though. Yeah, they have to. I mean, if you're looking at a team to adapt, I think TSM, out of all of these teams, would be one of the best suited squads to actually figure out what they need to do and on the fly change their play style. I like to see Von C getting aggressive with his movement into the enemy jungle right now. And the question is, what, what does Hack do? Do they look for a kill in the lane? Do they do their own invade? They're doing their own invade for the time being. I love Youngju is moving onto the backside, trying to steal some camps here. I want to talk to you about items a little bit as well. We're seeing a lot of crystal bits coming out, a lot of component items so far built on both sides. Flash, got to be careful, buddy. He does have that heal, but Sense Play, finding a decent amount of return damage. The rotation just can't go. Oh, <laughs> has to be careful there, Jackson. He really does. Dada, I mean, talk to me about the Black Feather here. Is he able to help fight this early? He's not really looking to fight. If he can get an on point and it's perfectly timed, maybe a turret shot or two goes his way, that's maybe where he looks to find a kill. But at this point, he's really not capable of doing too much for his team. 
All right, we can see at the moment things have calmed down a little bit, and admittedly, even after that early fight, Team Solomon only has a very marginal gold lead. It's about 100 right now. What they really do have an advantage in is actually map pressure and levels. Two of their members are one level up, and you can see they're constantly really pressuring the map. The only reason things are as close as they are is because Love Dude did manage to get back and steal those camps away. Vonsi wants him, though. You can see some damage out of Flash, but it's not going to be enough. Yeah, Flash activated that fourth ability, rained Von C back in there. <laughs> we'll see if he can continue to do so. With Von C getting this mid trant though, this would be very nice region for him. Very nice Impale coming out of Sense Play, finds a Githian wall into Flash as well. Flash just backing away here, making the call for Team Solo Mid not to fight this. Sense Play wants more, boots forward, loved you. Moving in with that Drifting Dark is going to have some of his Malices blocked by the small camp. Though Flash, I don't see him getting out of oh, this one. It's going to be peace, a kill Flash. picked up by I Love Young Ju. Very nice rotation out of now, I don't. I don't know if you, you caught that there, but what happened is I love Young Ju threw the Malice and Verdict over the wall and stole that that uh, mid away from Von C. And if Von C had taken that, I think it goes completely the other way. Yeah, I mean, you really need to be careful about having those camps stolen. Von C is doing exactly what I love Young Ju did a second ago now, stealing away the back camps for himself. He should be fairly safe here, but Best Chuck could be in a bit of a dicey position. Since play doesn't find the Githian wall, though. Yeah, a little bit of a dicey position, but you can see he's out farming his opponent in the lane right now. And this isn't a matchup where you, you would say like it definitely goes one way. Of course, the weapon win early on, it's pretty easy to last, but look at that Sorrow Blade timing. Yeah, that was very early. Vonsi actually choosing not to just recall or perhaps leave. He does try and get some harassment down. Knows that Flash is close enough to just probably move in, support him a little bit. Sense play is being the point guard for Hack, though. Always on the front lines, always looking at what Team Solomon is doing and making sure they can't sneak around too much. Yeah, and it's interesting to see, once again, uh, Iron Guard contra contract coming out for Sense Play now. We've seen this, I think, once, twice earlier on in, uh, in the tournament so far, and I'm curious to see if the contracts get a little more love as time does go on here. It's very interesting. It's something which has seen very little play, for example, during our region's Evil 8 games. But, as you said, making a bit of an appearance here. So maybe teams have been sleeping on this. Maybe they've been practicing it in secret. You know, it's hard to say. Maybe Secret's been practicing it in secret. We'll have to find <laughs> out later. Right now, I mean, th yeah, th this isn't a, a runaway game in any sense. Von C getting aggressive. Does this need to be a runaway game? Like, Team Solo Mid, look at their composition. They've got the Kashka, for example, historically very early game focused. Can't do as much later on. Gwen, you know, obviously uh, is very strong in the early game, but are they going to be able to scale against a Black Feather and a Samuel? I, I, they want, I would say, Hack, I would prefer their team scaling into the late game, but I don't think Team Solomon have drafted something where you're going to say they're going to be outscaled. Maybe there's a slight advantage going the other way, but just one decent team fight and you're doing Whoa. okay. Whoa! Von C, speaking of team fights, wants one right now, jumping in very quickly. The Oblivion oh. doing some good damage. Best Chuck also very low. Doesn't land the ultimate, burst. but doesn't need to. Von C picks up the kill. He's looking for more. I love Young Ju. Still has a good amount of energy. Von C goes I down. I love Young Ju. Could maybe turn around here. Oh, Flash! Just bought a fountain during that fight, used it to keep him and Best Chuck alive. That's an ace for Team Solo Mid. It really nice plays. I mean, of course, the whole team's doing work, but like you said, Flash grabbing that fountain mid-fight completely turns it around. And not only that, Flash having the sense to heal himself right when Lance was going for him absolutely turned that around. And Team Solo Mid, they get a turret off the back of that too. Let's look at how this started off. Vonsi tries to set something up. Yeah, Vonsi does get the heal to start. The Yummy Cat and a Frenzy right there. And Dada, he's out of the picture. Since play feels like he can do something. But look at Flash. He gets down there, gives the heal to himself, turns around. Vonsi is so getting good. the damage. The double kill, he does go down. But what is I Love Youngju going to do at this point? I mean, honestly, once the fountain came out, nothing. If Flash hadn't been able to get to the shop, if he hadn't healed himself and bought the fountain, very different story. I think easily Hack picks up the ace there. So Team Solo Mid, they're really showing some strong stuff early in the game here. But this is still fairly even. Only about a 200 gold, 300 gold lead to Team Solo Mid. Yeah, I, I think I want to take that last... Uh uh, engagement as an example to point out. I, I don't think Flash, when people a lot of times they say he is a leader, he, he has the game knowledge, I think he is mechanically skilled and he's proving it right there in these kind of engagements. I think he's he's developed so much as well from earlier on. Look at this, so Vonsi trying to go in, does get stunned back into the wall. Flash using that burst does get some good damage down. Great Oblivion hits all three. They can choose who they want to go for, but it might not be enough. Best Chuck kiting back a little bit. You can see Hack are on the run. They're going the wrong way, though. They're going towards TSM's base. Somebody Maybe try to kite in. Oh, that's going to be the trade. But Von C should be able to hunt down Sense Play here. I don't know if he's going to be able to get out. Von C stunned into the wall. The Gift of Fire burning away. Von C picks up another kill. It's not an ace, though, because Dada died so much earlier. 
Uh, Odato with the uh, the calculated respawn, uh, I would say, <laughs> if I was in that game right there. But yeah, obviously going going the way of Team Solo mid. And Von Zia, he's showing, uh, he's very comfortable on this Koshka. One of the things I really like here is, w the thing with Samuel, you're looking for Malice Verde, these are skill shots. And if you have a high mobility, high speed hero like this, you can abuse it, dodge, and get in and out of the fights very quickly. I really think teams around the world need to be taking note right now of what Team Solo Mid is, is doing that is sort of stylistically um, very strong from the North American teams, right? Like, look at how much they're dominating the jungle. We mentioned it briefly earlier, but we've seen it come to fruition. Vonsi is 7-1-1. One, one. Flash has been a part of almost every single one of those kills. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for Hack to do much in the jungle right now. I think maybe they need better vision. Maybe they need to focus more on the lane. Well, I mean, they have to switch something up here. And as time goes on, it, it sometimes it does come down to just taking a good team fight at the right time. I mean, we're getting closer and closer to Kraken getting out onto this map right now. Let's see if Wansi is going to jump in. Will he be caught here? He's looking for a little bit of damage, but honestly, it's difficult unless Flash can just tag team with him and make that aggressive play. Vonsi does have a lot of burst. He gets rooted, though. Vonsi's going to be going down. The Flash Fountain was a little bit too late there. Best Chuck still has an opportunity to do some good damage, but he's just going to do the smart thing. Back away. Flash X might be hunted down. Does have that reflex block, but it's only buying time, really. Flash yeah. cannot get out of there. Hack finds two kills. We talked about raining in Vonsi. It didn't really happen there. Well, maybe late on the fountain, late on the raining in of Von C as well. You know, we joke around, like, uh, raining Von C in, but I, I don't think it's something that, like, happens in the moment. This is something that they've been practicing for ve uh, very hard on for months, right? This is something that they worked on, and we can see as a, in their performance in North America, they really have figured out how to play together. And from time to time, a mistake like that will happen. The thing, at the end, there's no way you're going to get away if your team's solo mid and you have the Samuel chasing you with a frost burn and you lose the Koshka early on, it's just not going to happen. That is a very, very good point. And I actually quite like the Frostburn first here, which you might laugh at from I Love Young Ju. I feel like both in terms of kiting and if you ever do successfully kite for long enough to then chase later on, it does a lot against this composition. So Team Solo Mid, they do still have to be careful. We've talked about the scaling of hack. We do have a breaking point now on Best Chuck, though, so perhaps they've hit a bit of a power spike. Yeah, and I also didn't call out the uh, level 8 infusion, which is a pretty big deal. And this is showing that Team Solo Mid find it very important just to get through the next couple minutes and they hit that next power spike. So it's a little bit of a gamble to grab that infusion. If it doesn't pay out for you, it's a big waste. All right, and let's talk about some of the other items, too, because Dada has gone for the Serpent's Mask quite early here, something we used to see a ton of. Oh, sense play. He tried to find a pick there. Went a little bit deep. That's the Oblivion. Does land on the best chuck, but is not going to get the leap oh, down. Dada trying to jump in as well. Von C, he's so low on the flip side of this one. Can he get the kill? Oh, Von C, oh, what are you doing? Von C. Gets out of there. It's a one-for-one -one trade. Team Solo mid do have the advantage positionally to now take a turret, though. <laughs> I'm not sure if Von C knew the turret was up or not, but he went for it. This is why we love watching him. It can really go either way in his team's favor or completely against them. Of course, at the end, it's a pretty even trade. I, I was pretty impressed with the work that Dada was putting in there. Yeah, he did a great job of really zoning Best Chuck from being able to help Von C get the kill onto I Love Youngju. Even though Dada himself is not dealing necessarily that much damage right now, mm -hmm. he's still a threatening force in the long-term fights. Team still amid. They're slowing down quite a lot right now. Look at Von C. I mentioned, you know, a little bit ago that he had, was 7-1-1. and one. Now he's 7-3-2. and two. The momentum is shifting a little bit. Oh, it's definitely shifting. You can see Hack just pulling ever closer here. I think Best Chuck's in a pretty good place. They do have sustain with the Sadargio. They really can't afford to have one of their heroes bursted down. With this breaking point, they need to get some stacks up. Let Adagio's heal go to work for their team. All right, Flash X and Von C tag teaming onto the back line. They want to find some kills here. Dada going to be the main target. Von C's on the front line taking a lot of damage. I love Youngju untouched as of yet. Von C, oh, the first the member to fall. Hack is doing so much damage, so much kiting around. Look at I love Youngju get so much energy back from his passive too. Best Chuck oh, can't quite man. find the kill. Flash, he's stunned into the wall. No, Great save by Sense Play. Flash, he just the needs one more basic attack. He can't burn. do it. He can't get there. Sense Play, he might go down. Rolling backwards, Dada is able oh. to rejoin the fight. It's a clean <laughs> ace from Hack. Uh, I don't know. Is Four Court Jester playing right now? I haven't seen someone juggle that well in quite a while. <laughs> that was impressive. It really was, and it shows what we were talking about earlier on. Hack from East Asia in the team fights, the thing that they, the region is known for, just have great uh, mechanics, right? I mean, look, I love Youngju. He's untouched, as I said before. 
I mean, it was just phenomenal, uh, a phenomenal performance here in this fight. You see them just juggling around. Now Dada, he's sitting on the back line. I love Young Yu doing a very good job to use that Corrupted Genius to stay in the fight. He realizes it's time to go. The Frostburn we talked about, that's the Malice. The Verdict off the mark, but it doesn't matter because Flash will be chopped down as they're able to get in here. Dada, he dipped out at the right time, comes right back in. What a beautiful ace. All right, so we're now at nine kills to nine. Team still admitted hack. Things have evened up right now. Gold lead is actually more substantial than it was earlier on when Team still admitted was dominating more. But is it going to be enough? Dada, the main target this time as Vonsi tries to jump in. Sense play finds the root on the best chuck, though. The block comes through on the Oblivion, but now Dada's really starting to pick up steam, trying to get the damage down. Vonsi not doing an equivalent job on the back line. That's a verse, though. It finds the stun onto Dada. And maybe Team Solomid can roll through this fight. Best Chuck wants. I love Youngju so much. Oh, damage. he gets it! Coming out of the Gwen. Sense play. He can't get away. Humanus, we just saw Hack get an ace. And now they're about to get aced. Yeah, well, maybe uh, TSM doing a little or bit of a research they? mission. <laughs> they got this right. Von C is going to get Come on. this right. Flash is like, he's over here, Von C. <laughs> you got four seconds to get he's, an ace. He's going to the north. Three, two. Is he going to? Oh, come on. He gets on. away. Hack, do what not a get lance. Ace. What a lance. It should be going down any this moment is, here. I mean, this is kind of like the hidden perk, right, of Lance. We've talked about this before, especially in Europe. They just it, never seem to die. Yeah, we, we just have to put it into his, his kit at this point. We'll just uh, fill in the ability name. It prevents aces. Well, of course, he doesn't. But yeah, that's the thing we, we joke about from time to time. It's so hard to track that Lance down. And what's funny is Vonsi has so much movement speed that he actually ran past the target. Absolutely. I think a key thing for me in that fight is I would like to see Hack focus more completely on Best Chuck because Von C isn't doing enough yet. Uh, and actually, talk to me about his build. Two Shatter Glasses. Von C just wants to end somebody. <laughs> I mean, that's really all it comes down to. This is all burst. And if you're looking at infusions, you see Hack picked up their first infusion when Team Solo Mid were activating their second. So Team Solo Mid realized that they really want to put pressure on. They do not want to go later and later against this Hack composition, at least that from where I'm sitting, I really wouldn't. And based off the behavior that TSM are putting out, I would say that's basically what they're feeling right now. I mean, I gotta be curious about the lack of shield pierce on Von C, though, with kinetic shields coming out from several people on Hack and also a, an Aegis now on Dada. We might see another fight developing here, though. Hack starting to think about moving in. They're feeling more confident, perhaps, after their earlier exchange. But Best Chuck over the Ace wall is, is finding a lot of good damage. They need to reposition on the side of Hack to actually get the pressure down. Von C turns things around, finds first kill. First comes through, oh, but it's nice. great. Gets the in wall blocks it. That might be enough for Hack to get away, but the slows keep coming in. Sense play, I don't see him getting out of this one for as long as before. It's an ace for Team Solo mid. Two team fights they've now won back to back. Yeah, it was just a beautiful fight coming out of TSM. Really, the key to victory here as I'm watching these engagements, it looks like Von C's Koshka, he locks onto I Love Young Ju Samuel, and if he can burst the Samuel down early on in the fight. Are they going for the end here? Humanists, do they have the damage? They're actually they can, splitting they between do, the two I mean, turrets. Yes, yes they do. Solo mid might be able to take Hack down right here, right now. So much damage on the Vein Crystal. I don't think Hack can defend this one. Humanist, Team Solo mid Deep take the first solo. game of this two-game series. Look at look at the, the feet of Von C are just ecstatic here. <laughs> <laughs> He's so super laid back. He's like, that was never stressful. <laughs> you know, even when we lost fights, I knew. I knew it was all good. The feet never uh, never wavered there. But uh, yeah, the phenomenal uh, game coming out. And what's crazy is two minutes before that game ends, we see an ace from Hack going against TSM. But they, they adapted and, and they made it work there. They really did. You know, Von C's flying high, man. Feet can't touch the floor. Feet cannot touch the floor. <laughs> it, it, uh, floor is lava. All right, well, that was a very interesting game one from the series. I'm curious to hear even more about how the drafts played out, you know, whether it was to our analysts' expectations. So let's pass it back on over to the desk with Excoundrel and the boys. Excoundrel and the boys. Okay, <laughs> well, uh, hello, boys. Hello, <laughs> Excoundrel. That was uh, probably not as convincing as Velocity made it out against the game against Hunters, but TSM still looking dominant. What are the, what are the major storylines from this? Because 1C, double shatter glass. Seems good. I mean, it's a, it's a powerful build, right? I mean, it, it really does bring a lot of burst into Kashka's kit. But I'd have to say, like, I don't love the Kashka first pick. When I saw the Lance come online, I, I like that, right? So we talk about ways to immediately start countering whatever your enemy composition is. 
The Samuel last pick, though, had a really hard time actually doing any damage to Gwen, which was the signature play from TSM. Kashka essentially transitioned from early game bruiser to late game distraction, allowing Best Chuck to just get constant stacks on that breaking point, throwing out the monocle, throwing out the star blade. I love a little weapon power, Gwen. Everyone's always like, oh, we don't know if she's really that good. No, she's good. Like, look at this. Like, Best Chuck carries this late game by stacking up on the front line of hack, and immediately when he switched over to Samuel, he got annihilated. I do think one of the things that really hurt hack in this series, though, was that, or in this game specifically, is that they didn't have the damage on the black player to really close out those fights. They would burst down Von C so heavily, he would drop down to 10% health. The fountain comes out, the crucible comes out. He does not die, and best shot can just goes to town. We have a replay about six minutes into the game here. Let's take a quick look. You know, Von C dives in, doing what he does, distracting, trying to get off some damage. When you get the ult off the Black Feather, you're seeing Best Chuck's just trying to skirt around the edge of the team fight. This was the story for pretty much the entire game. It just took a really long time for Best Chuck to finally get enough items to where he was able to turn and kill everyone. I would say that had Hack fought that a little bit better, had Black Feather been able to have blocked the Kashka ultimate with his own, they may have actually been able to pull that off. But just really, really tough, like with that specific draft to be able to control the Gwen. Von C really toes the line between being insane and genius in terms of his plays that he makes. I mean, he's out there at sub 5% HP, escaping with a sliver of life. And like you said, always has flash X to reel things back in when he absolutely needs to. But that sort of uncontrolled aggression that has that controlling influences on the side lane gives TSM this characteristic aggressive play that we saw from the menus. Von C basically from the get go said, I'm going to go and I'm going to go extremely hard. Yeah, yeah I true. think that's so incredibly important for this team because especially against these East Asian teams who are so incredibly dominant in those late game team fights, those 3v3s, you saw even when down in gold, Hack was able to take a fight in the late game. But TSM, with that uncontrolled aggression early on, was able to pressure Hack enough to the point where they had a big enough lead to close out the game. I mean, I Love Youngju is touted as the best Samuel in jungle in East Asia. So for Vonsi to be able to go in there and kind of taunt him with the Kashka, pull out the Drifting Dark so they could then re-engage with that on cooldown was very intelligent from TSM, knowing when to go in, baiting out some of those abilities so that they actually have the advantage. Even though Kashka not controlling the entire game, it's really risky yeah. in the late game. Best Chuck just really impressed me, being able to keep confident, stay cool, say, guys, you know what? We got it. So what are we expecting, or what do you think we should be seeing coming up from Hack if they want to change their fortunes in the next game? They should be A-side this time round, I believe. Yeah, there are A. Honestly, I liked where they were going with the draft potential, but like I, like I said, I didn't love TSM's draft. The first pick, Kashka, I think is very risky, but Hack didn't have time from the beginning of the draft to the end to figure out what to do into that specific draft style, so. Speaking of the draft, we are into it, gentlemen. Gonna see the first band coming out. Hack, All really right. don't wanna see that Koshka. <laughs> You know what I love about this, though, is that the hack isn't just sticking to a blueprint. They're actually reacting to what TSM, they feel like, could be a power play from them. On the other side of the equation, TSM might be thinking like, oh, nice, nice, we just got you to ban something that we didn't really value highly, Kestrel, but we knew Lyra. it would work. Uh, yeah, Kestrel and Lyra both open here with the Lance ban. This is TSM saying, you take one OP, we'll take the other. And it is going to be uh, the Kestrel, which Hack have said is absolutely the most strong and the most aggressive hero that you can pick, you know, right now. And they usually play her in lane, so we see a lot of strength coming out of Dada on this Kestrel. They've been actually pioneering a little bit of the lane Kestrel since, uh, I think it was VIPL3 when we kind of originally saw it come out. Let's well. see, where do you think we go with this draft now for Hack? I mean, you've got the Kestrel, you're going up against the Lyra and the Gwen. Where would you, what would you be picking? Well, you definitely need some, so Flicker comes through, right? Flicker. So since I mean, play, quote unquote, said Flicker is OPOP. -OP. Yeah, he did. Technically, that's exactly what he said. OPOP <laughs> -OP is basically OP -OP. what he said. Yeah. So <laughs> here's the thing: when you're going into Lyra and into Gwen, heavy, heavy poke. You don't know if Gwen's going to be crystal power yet. You don't know if she's going to be weapon. So you have to have a comp that you are confident will succeed, regardless of what TSM strategy is. And they think Sky is the answer with the Flicker. I don't know if that's the case. We don't really have anyone to go in with Flicker when Flicker gets onto the target. Their strategy for hack is going to be Flicker holds onto somebody. Kestrel, Sky, you got to get rid of him before I die. The Glaive coming out, that's actually quite an interesting pick because this really allows TSM to get in those engages that they need to. And if they don't get those engages, they can always disengage very easily. Gwen can just 
pop out, and there's no way Hack can really catch up to them. Yeah, there's a lot of disengage tools from TSM. We have the Bulwark to keep Flicker from coming in. We have Vision Control coming out of Gwen. And Afterburn, if Glaive gets caught, will also get him out of a bad scenario. Gwen classically touted as one of the best picks into Flicker, just because of what Flicker brings to a team unit. She Obviously, he has that, that global sort of stealth thing that he brings to his team. They can basically stealth bomb your composition in, but you're stealth bombing a Sky and a Kestrel. It's not like you're stealth bombing an attacker, for instance, or any other kind of heavy belly, melee burst assassin. So, uh, yeah, I mean, quick predictions. I'm going to have to go with TSM again. I think TSM's got this one. Uh, TSM, I'm going to go for it as well. <laughs> Handing over to the men themselves, the wonderful, magnanimous, brilliant casters, it's AJ and Humanist. All right, let's get into the second game, guys. Team Solo Mid versus Hack. If that first game was anything to go by, I cannot wait for this one. Look at Sense, but what? Oh, my man. My. Okay, you got to break this down for people because this is a, a normal Lyra play. I haven't seen this from a Flicker before. Well, Flicker has to imagine that maybe Lyra's oh going to do this. Oh, my God. And Flash taking look at the he damage off the back. He's just Flash. melting and Flash should be going down oh, here. He can't one get more, out of this one. Two Sense more. Play Sense play gets it. I, I can't believe it. That was so smart. Like, so we, smart of a we, We've talked about OP, OP. Lyra. OP, 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 OP. <laughs> we've talked about Lyra and the, the level one play where you just go up behind people. And, and historically, no one else has been able to deal with that. Yeah. Right? But Flicker, because of the surprise element of his stealth, I mean, way to use a heroic part. I, I am so blown away by that. Absolutely love it. And these are the kind kind of plays that you will see out of Flicker. Very sneaky, uh, but you, we've talked about it with all these teams. She need, oh, he needs to have a good early game. Vonsi does pick up the return for Team Solo Mid, so it's a one for one. Sense play, gotta be careful here. I, I'm not sure what he's trying to accomplish. He's just trying to go on best Chuck, I guess. Does find some good damage. I mean, look at that damage. You come out there, you get a basic, and, and your fairy dust off. That is so annoying as a No, to he's not gonna do it again. Why oh, not? Oh, this is ridiculous. This is super dirty. Just get in there. I mean, his laner's coming out right now. Best Chuck sitting on sub 50%. Uh, health right there. It's just very nice place. I love Youngju is trying to find a return kill on a Von C here though. Flash X might be able to do this with the arcane missiles. He just needs one more basic. The minions actually could take down I love Youngju. He can't get away anyway between the two enemy turrets. But Von C goes down to Sense Play. Sense Play is everywhere right now. <laughs> what, sense play is, what is going on? He takes the back right here. He's got the region. This guy is just making all of the plays across the map right now. This is straight up like the best flicker play. I could have anticipated. Because he's using it in a way that no one really expected, I think. And we do have to talk about the flicker, though, right? Because I, I think when the draft was happening, at least what I was thinking was, OK, they have picked it into a Gwen, mm -hmm. right? And Buckshot's just going to keep revealing people. How are they possibly going to deal with that? Well, they're going to deal with it by shutting them down so hard in the early game. We've heard from a lot of teams that once flicker gets going, it's very hard to stop that train Definitely, from rolling. Yeah. Well, I, I think the Buckshot. The best way to think of it, if you have an idea, maybe, of where your opponent is, that's when it really shines through as a great ability against Flicker. But right now, SensePlay's been moving across the map, setting the pace, so he never knows where to actually throw that. It's kind of a guess if he throws it, then it's on cooldown, and what are you going to do? And it's a super unpredictable you know, pattern of movement from SensePlay. I think the, co the cool thing that I'm seeing here is that Sense play is doing like a true roamer job where he's actually like not sticking primarily with the laner or primarily with the jungler. He's just roaming by himself. He's just letting his jungler do his own thing, which is, I mean, it's hard to deal with that. It's literally my favorite way to play the game. I think like, it's always space created. I always joke about it when I, when I die doing that, right? <laughs> but a lot of times, if you can just steal away one camp, you, your jungler's taking his own. Like, you're setting your opponent back. A continuous accumulation across the map of these resources is going to win these games. He's making the plays right now. I'm really curious to see. Now, this is one of the few heroes that's been building Dragon Blood. Now, he didn't pick it up mm. early, but it's a pretty dirty little combo if you can sneak in on a target. Slow that Dragon people Blood up. Off. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is pretty strong. I want to talk about the implications of this, actually, though, the, the sort of style of play that we're seeing from Hack here. <laughs> because we mentioned last game, and it certainly rang true then at least, that North America is kind of the jungle dominance region, and East Asia is mostly about three versus threes, team fights, and the lanes, right? What we're seeing from Sense Play is, is very different. Like, he's dominating the jungle by himself, mm -hmm. perhaps. So it's, it's very strong stuff. I believe we're going to be unpausing in just a second, guys. So we're hopping back into this game. I can't wait to see more of what Sense Play is up to, to be honest. He's making his way back up towards lane right now. Could perhaps go in. It's a bit close to the enemy turret, though, and he does get spotted out by Flash X. So he's going to have to back away. Play it a little bit safe. 
Yeah, that's uh, Fairy Dust just doing good work, and of course, Lyra is one of the best heroes that you can put up in the lane for that early aggression. Dada doing a good job to trade right there, but Flash, he'll just put that sigil down, he'll right back up. Von C, gotta be careful here. I love Youngju and Sense Play coming into the fight. Von C, does he have the ability to afterburn away? Not quite yet, just oh! barely. Calculated Gets out of there. That was so close, and Flash X is actually just gonna use that Imperial Sigil to kill him up in case perhaps Sense Play stealthed into the bush to try and lock down that kill. It's two for two right now, three minutes into the game between Hack and Team Solo Mid. You know, it's a, it's a really small thing, but here at the World, Champion, the World Championship, you can't make a small play like throwing a sigil and having someone teleport home. It's all about efficiency, and right there, it was a little bit of a misplay out of Team, team Solo Mid. You know, I'm, a, I'm slightly concerned, though, because I feel like Team Solo Mid missed an opportunity there, right? We saw Sense Play and I Love Youngju expose themselves to Von C with both Flash X and Best Chuck full health nearby, and they just abandoned that. They said, okay, we're going to go to the enemy jungle instead. And given the pressure that Sense Play's been putting on, look, Von C doesn't have any backup right now. Is this really worth doing? Best Chuck starting that rotation. Actually, they do have a good amount of damage, though. Maybe Sense Play is going to go down here. They does. Now the heal coming out of Flash X is going to be able to keep Dada in a bad position, does find a good active camo stun, but he just can't get away. Buckshot reveals him even if he could have stealthed. Two more kills to Team Solo mid. So much slow coming out there, but ultimately it comes down to who gets that mid right there. Von C was able to claim it, and so they just snowball off the back of that. All right, so let's talk about Von C and, and some of the builds happening from these teams. Von C is going for a Stormguard banner right now. Mm -hmm. We've seen him a couple of times in the Evil 8 actually go for the Tension Crown Glaive. It's had varied success. I remember one game in particular, which is pretty crazy with him trying to backdoor. Do you remember that mm -hmm. one? But, I mean, it's interesting, right, that uh, this is the type of build he's going for when perhaps I would have expected more of a bursty build into, for example, the, the, the Sky and the Flicker. Well, I mean, this can come out to be an incredibly bursty build, uh, and it's going to help him take objectives, just like we saw, and, and we talked about getting that mid. If he can get that regen, they can snowball off of that. Oh, Flash Axe is struggling to get away here, does get rooted up, but Dada is the one taking all the damage. Oh, Chuck! Can't find the stun! Chuck, with a great skedaddle there, is gonna put some nice, nice damage down, finds another kill, five to two right now. TSM's starting to really rein this one back in. Yeah, I didn't know if you were going to say nice or nasty damage, but either way, would have worked. That's Chuck really performing uh, very well here. Sense play looking for a little bit more, though, trying to find Flash X. I love Youngju does have the ultimate, but the damage out of Von C as he jumps onto the back line is very strong right now. Best Chuck with those buck shots with the heroic perk as well, manages to lay waste there. So Team Solo mid pick up another kill. It definitely feels like they were maybe taken aback at the beginning. Mm -hmm. They steadied themselves, and, and now they're focused again. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm kind of feeling that right now. And you talked earlier about the tendency for uh, a team like Hack to rotate as three to be taking these team fights, pressuring on the lane. But right now, it feels like Team Solo Mid, they are constantly rotating as a unit. They're taking advantage of all these slows. Flash X actually, I believe, tweeted out earlier that he felt the team to win Worlds would be the one to imitate that Armada East Asian meta. And that's actually what he's doing here, right? So it, it's kind of curious, right? Like, Team Solo Mid has definitely gained a lot from the scrims that they've been having. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's one thing to uh, imitate it, it's another thing to master it, and right now they're doing a very good job of putting Hack into the dirt. And Team Solonid being up 1-0 in this series, if they can take two points early on, it means so much to a team like this. Absolutely. I mean, if Team Solomid uh, does manage to get two, they're obviously in a great position moving forwards. It would be quite difficult for uh, a tie to put them in a bad spot. Mm -hmm. But if Hack goes 1-1, this group is, is wide open. I still think they have the capability to. It's not as if they're not going to scale later on into the game. We've heard teams comment quite frequently about the fact that Flicker, if he gets shut down early, can't do too much. Do you feel like he did enough to get his team into a position to, to reach a late enough stage in the game? Mm, it's tough. It's, it's really borderline. I'm going to lean towards a no, he did not. Uh, but you're looking at, you, you have a Kestrel, you have a Sky, right? And these are two heroes that if they get into the late game, they have any sort of decent item progression, they can absolutely just crush through a team if they have any sort of decent engagement. The reason that Flickr's not giving you too much if he's not snowballing through the fights is because he doesn't have those defensive capabilities necessarily. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to vanguard my ally out of damage. I, I don't have a Githian wall to just kind of control a space. So that's where it gets a little bit tougher. Not to mention a lot of his kit is based on stealth and invisibility, of course, and that is somewhat dependent on on the position of the map as a whole, right? So let's say I'm playing Flicker on my team and I take the enemy turret. Okay, well now I have a lot more room to maneuver around with my stealth and maybe find picks using my ultimate. But if I lose a turret first, 
okay, well, then the enemy extends their vision line up, and I can never get even close enough right. to them with the stealth. So it's it's difficult, right? The, the, the snowball element is definitely there with that pick. That said, something we've seen from Europe a lot, and I want to bring uh, some attention back to here, is actually the Crystal Power Sky. Because recently we've been seeing more weapon, mm -hmm. uh, with Europe starting to make their way back into Crystal, at least from what I can recall. And that's what Hack's going for this game. So later on, a Crystal Power Sky has the potential to kite around, pretty much infinitely just do tons of damage over the course of a longer fight. Yeah, I mean, she really does. I, I'm not one of the people that went away from Crystal Sky actually mm. ever being good. I still think she's actually phenomenally good. And if you were a good Sky player, this is a tournament where you can still pull it out. Don't go away from that. Don't get sucked into the meta and what other people are saying. Like, if you're a good Sky player, get out there and play. But the thing is, if you're slowed up, like if Larry gets a couple basics, if you get buckshot, all of a sudden glaives on your face and it becomes very, uh, very dangerous. That's like, true. if you can't Surrey Strike into a good position, you're just going to get melted. Yeah, I think that there needs to be a distribution of responsibility for damage in the fights, right, between the two <laughs> carries. Because if it's just obviously the sky, then there's a lot of tools on Team Solomon to deal right. with that. But it's interesting, you mentioned, you know, getting sucked into the meta. What meta, right? Like, we're at Worlds. So it's it's not like your regional meta. It's it's a new, ever-evolving Worlds meta. Right. But I mean, one of the first times we're seeing it to this extent. The well. ever-evolving meta, as we look at the last couple of months of play, has said CP Sky is really not one of the major picks. It's not something that people are leaning towards. It's like when you're kind of forced into a corner and you don't have anywhere else to go. And I think she still has uh, a place here. All right, so I'm hearing from production that we've got a few minutes, perhaps, of pause here, just solving a few issues real quick. But there's plenty to talk about, especially given the fact that we're seeing some picks that maybe people didn't expect, or perhaps... Uh, little Ozo? We got a little Ozo love We got Ozo earlier, earlier I mean, on today. I know you're happy about that saying, one. I mean, <laughs> I, I just want to see all the heroes played. We're getting there. We're, I mean, I wasn't actually expecting Glaive, for example. And that, really? that came out from Team Solomon this game. And Glaive is one of the other sleepers that I think people weren't putting enough emphasis on. Mm. Uh, we, we saw in, in, in the last update where, you know, Glaive, he just got a little bit more armor, a little more shield. Maybe someone that was taken away from Lance, they just transferred it right <laughs> on over there. But Glaive, he's always been good. And especially when we look at, like, uh, our, our Celestes, these mages that want to sit in the back lines that are mm. squishy. Like, if you can reposition or get on top of their face, that is what Glaive loves to do. That is absolutely true, and that certainly has been uh, kind of the meta for a while now. Like, the longer-range mages, Celeste yeah. was really just top tier, uh, looking back again at our region Evil 8 games that happened recently. So picking something that you know can deal with that kind of thing does make a lot of sense to me. Also, one thing I like about Glaive into the Flicker is that Flicker needs to be peeled. Right? Mm -hmm. He needs to be peeled, because you can't necessarily just run away from him. Like, you can't just pop your boots and get out. The slow is ridiculous, and the root, if he places it correctly, is going to bar your, your exit path anyway. I hope you got your skedaddle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need it. There. You really need it. So Glaive has the capability of jumping in and saying, all right, you're on my teammate. You're slowing him up, but I'm just going to knock you away. Right? You can use it for the peel as well as the engage onto the back line. I'm curious, which do you think is, is preferable in some of these fights later on into the game in this game? Because obviously Sky is another target you got to worry about. It, it's really tough. That's the thing, because... Honestly, if I'm playing in this game, one of the biggest things, um, and it, it depends, like who's farming well, how many mm. kills have they got, are they snowballing on you, all of this comes uh, into play here. But a lot of times, if I'm playing the Glaive, uh, I'm looking to, to lock this Kestrel down, because she's going to active camo, I'm going to try to get over the active camo before she can go ahead and activate that. And if you can reposition the Kestrel, she, well, she does have incredibly high damage output, and we've seen that time and time again, just chunking through people with Glimmer Shots, she's incredibly squishy herself. Yeah. So if she's repositioned, that becomes very easy to go ahead and follow up on. So I'm also hearing from production that we've got a, a great game happening on our second stream. If you want to tune into that one, perhaps on your second monitor, it's oh going to yeah. be going on between Hammer's Velocity and Red Cannons, I believe is what I heard. So head on over to twitch.tv slash Vainglory Esport uh, for that one. So regardless, we've also got this game happening here. We are in a pause. We should be back quite soon. I'm, I'm interested to see, right, because if Hack pulls out the win here, with this type of Flicker play, does that like make a serious dent in the world's meta? Because Flicker, we've heard really, really conflicting things about him from the teams. I, I don't think it would make a dent. I think it just proves what we've been hearing. Mm -hmm. Right, like we don't have the evidence necessarily on stream right now to say that yes, uh, Flicker is a force to be reckoned with and is part of the developing meta right now. But I think they're making a case for it, and as time goes on, I expect Flicker to be one of these heroes that's pulled out uh, if the draft makes sense. I'm hoping to see some weapon Flicker jungle. <laughs> oh no, Worlds isn't the place for this. I, I should. I'm getting off topic. We're not live, are we? <laughs> 
All right, so Hack versus Team Solo mid. Right now, just for the viewers who maybe are only now tuning in, because of course we have had a, a bit of a sizable pause here, the game is is not super even. Team Solo mid has been pulling away after a very early advantage gained by Hack. Mm -hmm. Flicker is one of the key things that we're talking about here because we, you know we've heard a lot about him being very strong early, and if you can't get off your feet, maybe getting shut down a little bit later on. We saw great strength early, especially with those early rotations that he made, countering the Lyra invade mm -hmm. early on, but Team Solomit has really bounced back. So one thing we got to talk about, right, like experience of these teams. Because Hack, they're, they've been a dominant force in their region, but if you look at Team Solo Mid and, and the sort of volume of games that they have played, like every single weekend, just playing against top teams, they've been studying the game for a long time, they've been in the team house practicing, it does feel like they've got a, a mental game, which a lot of the teams maybe haven't. You know, they've got the ability to bounce back from something that could be concerning in the early game, pretty rapidly. You know, rather than waiting until 15 minutes to get back onto their, onto their feet, they, they jumped right back into things after four or five. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's also important to take into consideration, like you said, TSM, they're incredibly well prepared, probably mm -hmm. more well prepared than almost any other team that's actually out here playing on the stage through this tournament. But, uh, you know, they have Von C on their team, and Von C, he is volatile. Well, he can have 17 kills in a game, he could have 17 deaths in a game. But it tends to lean towards the kills, but you never know. And tilting, a player is something that you can use to your advantage. Like if yeah. you can go and shut him down. Sure. Now I think maybe that's where Hack were trying to uh, to go with when now Flicker got an early advantage for them. I'm not a huge fan of the Sky going in there on a questionable uh, invasion. And you saw Sky actually go down and Glaive got a kill. I would have liked to see Sky just be like, you know what? This is an easy time for me to farm and get a couple levels. Take maybe the mid and then get back to my jungle right there. Mm. But you're playing against Vonsi on the Glaive. You don't have an item advantage, yeah. and all he's going to do is come back. And if you're not getting the backs and you're dying, you know Vonsi's going to be in your jungle taking your mids like in a blink of an eye. Another question that I have about this game, and, and strangely, right, we haven't talked much about the Kestrel yet, which is, is weird. So how do you think that's going to come into effect later on? Well, as we get later into the game, it's uh, you really have to pick your poison. It, when it comes down to having the CP Sky and this weapon Kestrel, that's massive damage output from two sources. I think right now, DSM has done a good job to put pressure onto the Sky so much that they won't have to focus on her so much going in later into the game. And it'll be very easy for them to go ahead and round up this Kestrel, pin her in, and maybe she goes invisible, but have a buck shot and then we'll go from there. Absolutely. So we're still waiting for some more word on this pause, guys. We're trying as hard as we can to fix things up, make sure the competitive integrity is maintained as best as possible. Although I have to say, when you're sneaking around the way that Sense Play was at the beginning of the game, you got to question that anyway, because that was dirty. Yeah, that is dirty. <laughs> That's not right. Well, I mean, it, it's really fun to play. I think also one of the things, maybe we can see some sneaky plays. Like, you talk about the Castro later on. How is this going to come into play? True. We had our all-star uh, matchups for Evil 8 uh, oh, just yeah. a couple weekends ago. <laughs> all stealth. It was the all-stealth the all -stealth <laughs> team. And one of the things, it was the first time I've ever played uh, that sort of composition because mm. it was it was kind of jokey. But there were strengths to it. And it comes in different ways where you can use the flicker to get Castro into a position where she can then active camo further. Or you can go ahead and active camo into a position where you're almost there. And then you use that flicker ultimate to get even further in. Um, so you can go ahead and amplify those natural abilities for her to be sneaky in and around these fights. Personally, I kind of like staggering them for kiting. So mm. you can go in with the Kestrel, right? Uh, when you're trying to back away after you've got enough weapon power to use it frequently, you can pop your active camo and towards the end of that you pop the flicker ultimate. And so long as the communication is on point, that can allow you to like get one glimmer shot in, pop up on the other side of the fight, and, and be really difficult to track down. Now, that all being said, of course, Gwen is like such an innate counter to stealth mechanics because of the reveal on her right. A ability. So the fact that Team Silomit is running that could make it difficult for some of the, the sneakier plays to come out. But a lot yeah. of times you have to have, like, and we talked about it before, you have to have an, a general idea of where your opponent is mm. because, well, it's, granted, it's a pretty low cooldown on that buckshot. If you see that go down and you are in a slightly decent position, that's immediately, you just go. I would prefer to see them to use this flicker to get on top of the Gwen and just delete her out. And then go, go ahead and fight the Glaive thereafter. But really, the big threat here is going to be the Gwen. All right, so I'm really interested to see how the rest of this game keeps going on. We are still in a pause, unfortunately. I think we've kind of exhausted the speculation that yeah. we can do for this one. So I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the other things happening at Worlds and some of the other uh, games coming up, for example. In this group, we know that we've got Hack, Team Solo Mid, and I believe Gangstar Cerberus. Now, 
how are they feeling watching this? Like, do they feel like Hack is maybe stronger than they anticipated? Do they feel like perhaps Team Solo Mid is weaker than they anticipated? Oh, we have them all here. Let me take a look into the crowd. Do we have Cerberus? Oh, they look like they're having a pretty good time up there. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I think <sighs> Cerberus are one of the very uh, interesting teams to me coming in here because I, while I feel like they've they've done very well in Europe, they feel like uh, a s sort of middle of the pack team mm -hmm. that can, in the right game with the right draft, beat any team and make them look like uh, a challenger level team, right? So they're incredibly talented. They need a very good draft, but they can come in here. And w this is this is really nice, I think. I mean, it would be my preference to see another team playing first and start to start to see these tendencies because while all these teams have been scrimming and you start to do that research, there's nothing like watching them on the main stage. Mm. That is a very good point. And, and this is really excellent opportunity. These group stages are really a breeding ground to see what this world's meta that we were talking about earlier is really going to develop into. Because certainly, uh, I think a lot of people have been expecting East Asia to come in and, and roll the competition. And Team Solomon, at least in this series so far, have been somewhat proving that wrong. Mm -hmm. So what I'm curious about is maybe if the, the perspective is going to like palatably change moving into day two. Because in day two, we have a single elimination bracket. Right. And every single game is like do or die. I mean, every single game is do or die here too, but to like a lesser extent. So I'm curious, right? Like if you see something like this flicker kind of almost explode and work really well today and Hack, for example, gets out of, of, of group stages into brackets, tomorrow does that mean you just ban him because you don't want to take the risk? Well, an, ex an example of maybe what you're thinking here is, Okay, well, we know, we know what Lyra was going to do. She's going to rotate around the backside, mm. look to be sneaky. Maybe sometimes she steals the mid. Maybe sometimes she goes to lane. Depends what's happening. But we see Flicker rotating across. Now, that was a bit of a surprise. I'm going to put Vision down, all right? Mm. Now, now you've rotated out, and your jungle has a slow clear. And it's, it's that sort of adjustments. I'm, I don't know if they're sitting up there with a notepad or what they're doing. <laughs> you know, but it's those sort of things that this team might be looking for here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the delay. We are back on the Halcyon Fold for Hack versus Team Solomid Game Two. Team Solomid is currently six kills to two with a 1,300-ish gold lead over their opponents. So, Humanist, break this down for me. What are we looking to see in the next couple of minutes here? Oh my goodness, Jackson, you just throw it all on me right here. I, I would expect to see aggression continue out of TSM. Von C uh, he actually activates those boots uh, a little bit early there. Let's see if they continue on this. Von C trying to go for maybe a bit of a turret dive there, but he takes so much damage already. I love Youngju with a beautiful death from above, stopping anyone from moving through that bush. Hack are on the offensive right now. Good ace coming out, stunning up. I love Youngju, stopping more chase, but a one shot, one kill does tag best Chuck NA. Both teams, they're kind of just going to have to walk away bruised here. Yeah, they're walking away bruised, but right now Hack have a massive advantage. Basically, they forced the fountain out of TSM, Hack moved down to the shop, and they have a fresh fountain ready to go. And they're actually sitting in a place where they could get decent damage on. It looks like Vonsi is going to get back and get most of his jungle out right now. Uh, but it's, it's actually, he's going for the CP here. So, uh, I'll get back to that in a second, but I'm really curious to hear. You said, okay, Hack, they get an advantage, they keep their fountain up. Why didn't they do anything with it? Why didn't they decide to perhaps go for an invade? They've backed away, they've actually given Flash uh, enough time, it's only 15 seconds away from his fountain, and they're not really pushing the turret in a, in a strong way. It's hard to say. It felt like that was uh, the pressure going to lane, but here's your engage. Oh, sends play. He's doing such a good job of stopping Von C from chasing any further. Dada, he's not able to maybe get in range to finish up the kill, but you can see again there how important it is to keep sense play off of your carries because that completely locked them down. My idea based off your last question is they knew Vonsi was far enough ahead into his own jungle and having the Stormguard banner, he's probably going to have already cleared out those camps. So while you might move over there and get the kill, you're really not going to get too much of an advantage out of it. All right, so you were talking earlier on about builds. You know, it's it's certainly interesting here seeing, for example, this early Frostburn on Isle of Youngju. That could be very useful at slowing down, for example, Best Chuck because he doesn't have an ability to jump away. So it's predictable movement to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. Do you think the builds here make sense? Yeah, all the builds make sense right now. I'm not saying I necessarily agree with the Frostburn at first, but it's going to be a decent item for him that he probably would have wanted to build at some point here. Absolutely. Of course, it does get better over the course of the game as the slow scales with crystal power. I love Youngju and Dada right now doing a very good job of just stopping Team Solo Mid from pushing in this lane too quickly. Gwen does have an ability to shove it fairly fast just with the wide AoE damage coming out of the buckshot. And actually, Team Solo Mid used that push to maybe go for a gold miner here. That's going to be the one shot. Does not connect. I love Youngju trying to find the angle. He does get a lot of damage on the Von C whilst trying to go for that gold mine. Flash X cannot run away. He goes down. Hack find another kill. Von C actually moves in to knock I love Youngju back, but I'm not sure if that's going to accomplish enough here. He does have the afterburn. 
was able to get away just barely. Yeah, I mean, that was a great fight coming out of Hack, but I feel also errors coming out of Team Soul mid. Flash, of course, he doesn't want to have to use his ultimate uh, early on in this fight. He doesn't want to have to sell Fountain, but I, it just had to have been miscommunication there because he could have portaled into a much safer position, uh, at least bought some time for his team, knowing he was going to go down there. Yeah, it's, it was definitely an interesting choice not to use that, but we all know Flash is kind of the strategist. Maybe he's got a plan for that within what the cooldown would have been, even considering that death. I would have uh, said I had a plan. You would have said, oh, well, of course you'd say you have a plan. Wait. We'll find out if he does. Maybe they're going to use it here, for example, to get over that wall. For now, they're just backing away. Well, I mean, th there's no reason, right? Like, Goldmine was just taken. There's no no cracking on the map. That's maybe a reason why you would think of holding on to the Arcane Passage. But what it's really nice to see is the, uh, this uh, quite early contraption coming on here. Now, this is an item we don't see built all the time, but I think it'll be used to great effect here. Against Flicker, against uh, also a Kestrel, it seems like a very solid choice. Fonsi just barely getting out of that active camo. I'm not sure it's going to matter, however. He does get taken very low. Dada ducking up into that bush, looking for the one-shot, one kill. Only finds Flash X, though. And it's a uh, very nice engagement that's coming out for Hack here. They've put pressure on TSM. Vonzi almost going down, but look at the Sigil just healing him right back up. The thing is that Hack are holding on to their fountain, so if they take a decent fight, they fight on their terms, this should be going their way. All right, you can see them beginning to siege up a little bit more here. The question is, do they realize Vonzi backed away? If they don't, maybe they don't want to take too much of a risk. Maybe they don't want to uh, walk in, because of course Vonzi going crystal with the Stormcrown does have a lot of burst can really pair up nicely with best Chuck NA. So far... Since play a little bit of hesitation. You can tell right now Hack aren't sure exactly what to do, and this is kind of the thing before where you asked, why didn't they follow into the jungle? But they didn't know where Von C was. They don't know how much of the, the jungle he's cleared, so since play realizes we actually have control over, over the middle area of the map, moves down, but he can't take that mid away fast enough. So a little bit of an error coming out of Hack's play. Do you think part of the, the caution, perhaps, from Hack is actually, oh, hang on, Dada, gonna get jumped on, does reflex block that afterburn, so no stun coming across. Vonzi walks right into that active camo. I love Young Ju, just gonna be supporting from the side, getting some good damage down. Vonzi eats the one shot, one kill, and has to back away. Sense play wants more, though. I love Young Ju, too, jumping forward. Surrey strike, but the minion wave is gonna stop that advance. Could go for the turret here, though. That's the real goal anyway. They need to be killing those to get to the Vein Crystal later on. Good wave clear coming out of Team Solomon, however. Yeah, really nice job there. And also one of the, the tools that they have at their disposal is if you drop an active camo down, that's something where Sky can just sit there and forward barrage right in that active camo. If Glaive jumps in there, that's the easiest activation of this Kestrel's life. So I want to return to my, my previous question that I was beginning to ask. Do you think maybe Hack, they talked about the fact that they've been becoming, uh, never mind, Vonzi going in yet again, does get a lot of damage off with that wow. ultimate, but he just can't get away afterwards. He can't do the hit and run because the sense play slow is doing too much work. It's also going to be a kill on the best Chuck. Flash X does have the portal, so he stops the ace, but a turret picked up for Hack. And one of the things right now, this, I don't know if this is Hack uh, has the timing in their head, but look, Flash's Fountain just came up right now. Hack knew that they had a window of opportunity. They pushed it right there, get the kills, they get the turret very nicely played. And so they're going to go ahead and move in. Looks like we got a little replay here. We're going to see what happens. So Von C, he's going to jump forward. Where's the rest of his team? It's just nobody ready to follow. Perfect Surrey Strike from I Love Youngju to get into a safe position. And, well, you have a skedaddle, but you're a very squishy hero, and that's going to be Gwyn going down. Flash, of course, portals out of there, prevents that ace, but Hack just taking advantage of this right here. Blocking crowd control only does so much. It's not like a reflex block where you also get a missing health shield. You know, skedaddle is going to give you that ability to dodge something, but if you eat it, you're still going to be taking the damage. Hack, they've, they've done a good job here. Team Solomon had really pulled back into the game, and now Hack's making their way uh, forward here. I really think this point is so key, otherwise I wouldn't keep trying to bring it up, but Hack mentioned that they feel like they're becoming more and more of a late game team, right? When we talked to them in, in his video interview earlier on. It's so interesting, it's isn't kind it? Of, it's kind of apparent from this game, right? Like they're being very cautious in the mid game, trying not to extend into the jungle. Now that they feel like they have a big enough lead, they might go in. Sense play doesn't find the slow onto the key target, so just Flash X, and Vonsi's still full health. This could be an opportunity for TSM to try and find a re-engage, but now they're the ones being cautious. They don't want to overextend here. Von C, I would have expected him to go in about 30 seconds ago. You know, like this This is not the normal play. He does go for that after burn, but I love Youngju with a beautiful reflex oh block. Stops it. Oh my goodness, quick kill. Jackson! Hack! Look at their kite ability in that fight. You can see why TSM was wondering about going in at all. I call hacks. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to only be hacks here. Uh, just phenomenal plays. T TSM right now, it is so apparent that 
Bonsi is looking to only burst the sky down, and if he does not do that, they almost completely lose the entire fight. While Best Chuck has enough damage to start chunking through these targets, Dada is doing a great job with the glimmer shots, and they're abusing this flicker to just control the movement through these fights. It's just phenomenal to watch. You know, I can't wait to hear the analysts talk about this a little bit later on, but I want to hear your thoughts, you know, again with more information here about Von C's build. Because, yes, obviously you do get some burst offered by going Crystal Power, mm -hmm. but with the heals, for example, coming out of Flash X, right? Like, it does it not make more sense just to go weapon and try and chunk down whoever you are able to stick on? Well, that, that's one route. So you can go the weapon route, maybe pick up a Bone Saw, and you focus down a target with Best Chuck. I'm not sure that that's necessarily the best way, but it is definitely an option. I don't like the Shatter Glass because this is so bursty, you're all in, and if you do not burst the target down, you've lost the fight. I would much rather see a bit of cooldown built for him and look to just abuse Afterburn, looking to reposition and peel for the Gwyn and let her do the majority of the work. All right, well, we've hit 15 minutes, guys. The Kraken is now on the map. This could be the key opportunity for either team to take it. Team Solo Mid, formerly known, of course, for the Team Solo Mid special. Maybe they can pull one of those off here. They do still need to get every single turret, so it's available. Kraken's getting taken pretty quickly by Hack, though, and TSM's being very cautious here. They don't want to engage carelessly. Active camo blocking off the choke point. Hack starting to pull back a little bit. Look at how quickly the Kraken's going down. Oh, it's Bonsi not going to be stolen. Bonsi nearly found it, though. I love Young Can he deal with the damage? Best Chuck trying to kite around the edge of the fight. He's looking for the key target. Oh. He does get one, but Sense Play has the damage. Oh, Donna no. hunting down Bonsi. One shot, one kill. Not going to land, but the real damage has been done. Humanist Kraken is on the field. Sense Play. Oh, man. I thought Get for him. a second that was an active camo up Kestrel. I thought it was going to be over, but Sensei can still find it. He's going for that Binding Light, doesn't land it. He's Look got it! Oh, oh. Bonsi has the afterburn, though. Just barely able to get away. <laughs> Humanist, we could be seeing a first one for one here. <laughs> I can't stop smiling. This is so good. Honestly, like all of these, the, the, there was a major mistake. Flash did neither Fountain nor used War Treads in that engagement, and you were going to lose every fight where you're not using those items. That's a very, very good point. And, you know, especially when you look at the fact that Best Chuck had actually hunted down I Love Youngju on the back line. He, like, he'd successfully killed probably the most key target right now. Mm -hmm. um, but the support wasn't there. Like, the Roamer did not, frankly, do his job at keeping him alive. And that meant that Von C's efforts on the other side of the, the fight were in vain, right? Because he'd done a good job of zoning out the damage from, from Hack and, and from Dada, right? Yeah. Everything needs to come together in such a crucial game like this on the world stage with such excellent teams. When you see a misplay like that, you gotta you gotta question it. All right, let's see if this engagement can happen here, Jackson. Moonflow coming out from Sense Play. He wants to end things right here, right now, trying to get some damage on the flash. Bonsi can't really find oh too much on the back line. Oh my goodness, Best he didn't found again! Ended. He didn't found again! Oh man, that is not good news. You you gotta wonder if maybe Hack's in his head right now. Hack moving on to the second and final turret. For Team Solo mid, Best Chuck is doing some good damage, but Sense Play zoning him away with the slow. They can't get through the backdoor protection, though. Hack. Well, they're trying, though. <laughs> man, they're, they're going to have to back away here. Team Solo mid just barely staying in this game. I mean, unbelievable. Hack, I, I was questioning that sort of aggression that they were going for because I was looking at net worth, the items that are built across the board and compositionally. Team Solo mid, I feel like maybe I wasn't giving them enough credit. They're definitely still in a position where if Best Chuck can uh, start to get some stacks on that breaking point, he can blow up uh, the Kestrel, blow the sky up, and, and pull themselves right back into pole position in this game. But the way these engagements are going, Sin's play is absolutely phenomenal on this flicker. There's a reason why he literally said OP, OP. OP, OP. Like, that was his quote. Uh, the rest of it, he needed you know, a translator to help him with. This well, we, had to, we had to he translate for, for the translator. <laughs> we were like, oh, it's, oh, it's OP. She was like, what does OP mean? All right. Let's take stock of this game real quick before things just blow up again. Hack, they're 12 kills to seven. They've got a 4,000 gold lead, and only one turret is left alive for Team Solo mid. Their backs are against the wall here. They did win game one. So even if they lose here, they've still got one point in the group. But it can't feel great, you know, having such a strong performance in game one, having such a strong comeback from the very strong early game of Hack in game two, and, and not really being able to keep it going. You can see Hack thinking of maybe going for a backdoor here, something like that. They're well, being the wind's also the split off for them right now, and they have uh, you're either going to teleport back or someone's going to get picked. Uh, they are going to all three teleport backs. The team's still in mid. I mean, 
I actually wonder if maybe Hack shouldn't have pushed the lane there. It gave Team Solo Mid some free what goals. Oh, oh, Team Solo oh. so Mid did not see this one coming. Flash jumps right into the fight. He needs to be with that buddy system on his teammates. Fountain does get popped this time, but Best Chuck still the first target to fall. Flash X, he can't get away. He goes he can't down. Do it. Hack, Hacker, do they it. take two kills in the fight. They're going to take the game. It's one for one between Korea's Hack and North America's Team Solo Mid. Most likely. This it's is the one. <laughs> Come on, Fozzie's he? not defending uh, here. I mean, hey, he's got an opportunity to just become uh, more legendary Prove than me he wrong. already is right here. I mean, yeah, okay. He's gonna <laughs> All right, so that was a pretty incredible game, Humanist. We had that long pause in the middle to really give us a chance to break it down in great detail, what we expected to Look have at the happen. Smiles. But what I did not expect to have happen is just the strength, the consistency of that comeback from Hack. Once they started making those positive moves and starting to, to get back into the game, they never really let go again. Yeah, I think I, maybe I underestimated since play a little bit. And, you know, any of these teams watching, I'm sure they're taking note that while maybe you start to get any sort of advantage, you really have to keep vision down across the map and respect this flicker play coming out. It was really nice. And while it was actually a lot of uh, flicker making the plays early, then it felt like maybe he was falling behind. But that whole time, that's where Sky and Kestrel were farming, and they really pulled it together as a unit. It was beautiful to watch. Absolutely. Well, we really 